When you first log into Quick Schools, this is what you will see. Across the top left are a list of modules. These modules can be configured by user. Across the top right, there are a list of useful links. And across the bottom right is our live chat feature. You can use this window to speak with our technical personnel if you have any problems with our system. Right now, we are looking at our home page. And as you can see, on our home page, we have these two really big buttons. These buttons are designed to guide you through setting up your account. So as you click through these big buttons and return to the home page, this list of buttons will change until finally you reach our dashboard. So let's begin by clicking on Add Teachers. When you first access the Teachers page, this is what you will see. You have two options for adding teachers. The first is to import from an Excel file. The second is to add one manually. Let's do one manually for now. I'm going to add Miss Knows A Lot. An email address is optional. If you provide an email address, it'll, the server will send the user an email with a username and password, which he or she can use to log into the system. I'm going to add one more person, Mr. Principal. And I shall invite him to the system. Now you'll always have the option of inviting the user later by clicking on Invite Now. All you need to do is provide an email address and you're all good to go. Now if you, if you click on any of these teachers, it'll pop up um, a window where you can add additional information regarding the teacher. Things like address as well as administration. So in this case, you can delete teachers, you can re-invite, or you can even set a teacher as having resigned from the school. Here we have a history of when the user was created. You'll notice that this is a window. You can click on the title of the window and drag the window around. And when you're done adding teachers, we can go back to the home page or you can go to the next step, which is add students. To add a student to your account, there are two options. The first is to add one manually by filling in a form. The second option is to import from an Excel file. Let's start by adding in our first student manually. You will need to key in some basic student information first. So if you like to sort your students by last name, we recommend you put the last name first, followed by a comma, and then the first name. For example, if your student's name is Russell Peters, you'll put in Peters first, followed by a comma, and then Russell. A preferred name is optional. You can select the grade from the drop-down as well as the homeroom teacher. And then you add the student. If you need to add further details to the student, click on the student record, and you'll see that there are a lot more tabs available to you. We have addresses or ad address. We have parents and you can have multiple parents per student. You can also link students with other students as siblings. We have medical information, certificates that you can upload as well as custom fields. Custom fields are for when you want to store information that isn't readily available. For example, let's say I want to store the favorite color for the student. I'll just type in the, na the name of the field as well as the value. So let's say Rus Russell likes green. Update that and now his information has been updated. Importing students from the Excel file is also a very simple process. Let's start by clicking on Import from Excel. The first thing you will need to do is choose a file. 
I have one right here. What the system will do is try to match the column headers in your Excel file with column headers in our database. And if they match, they'll, it'll auto automatically link them up. But if they don't match, what you need to do is select one of the fields in our database from the dropdown that corresponds with the column in your Excel file. You can ignore um, columns as well, or and you can also create custom fields as we discussed earlier. So favorite sport is a custom field, and we can store it that way. Let's click on import. It takes a couple of seconds for it to process. And once you're done, it shows all these students in your listing. Let's click on a student right now, Ann Watson. We have all the particulars, including the birthday. We have parent information, and we even have sibling information. The system will try and match siblings based on the email addresses of the parents. And here's the custom field that we added, favorite sport. And there you have it. This is the profile page. From this page, you can change your basic information you can change your password, you can change your picture, or you can change your theme. By default, every account starts with a melon theme. Let's try and change it to berry. What do you think? Do you like it? This is the school settings page. From this page, you can change the information about your school, like the school's name, the address, the time zone, contact information, email, and website. If you're on one of our paid plans, you should be sure to select the principal for your school and click on save. You can change the logo of your school. This logo will appear on the top left corner of your account, and you can also add people to the school admin role or define additional roles for your school. School administrators are able to see the features page as well as add students. From the features page, you can turn on modules as well as configure access for your various teachers. Right now, we're on the Apollo plan. And to turn on attendance, all we need to do is click on attendance. And the feature has been turned on. You can also define who has access to the attendance page. So let's say we will allow the principal to be the global attendance taker and we'll take attendance once a day. And you'll notice that from our list of modules, we now have an attendance module available on the top left uh, list of modules. This attendance page, uh, this attendance link is only available to myself as the administrator and the principal as we've defined earlier. When you've completed setting up your account and you go back to the home page, you will see this dashboard. The dashboard is divided into three areas. Towards the left, there's the event list on the top and the to-do list on the bottom. And towards the right is the live feed. The live feed is just a listing of all the various activities that have occurred on your account. The event list is for you to announce various events that are coming. You can click on the plus sign to add an event. Let's say we have a parent conference coming up can select a date and I can decide to share this event with teachers or teachers and parents. So when parents log in to their dashboard, they will see the parent conference coming up on the 31st. 
The to-do list is personal and to myself. I can type in anything I want, like create more video tutorials. I can also use the plus sign to enter even more to-dos. And when I'm completed, I can just click on the checkbox and it's done.